Hi, I'm your Everyday Joe. Thanks for checking out this video. On this channel, we spend a lot of time cooking, and occasionally I have products that I unbox and review for you. Today's unboxing video is going to be for the Ninja Foodie Never Stick Premium Cookware Set. We're going to test some of its claims, we're going to do a little bit of cooking on it, and at the end of the video, I'll give you my take on it, whether or not it's, uh, it's worth getting. So stay tuned. So uh, I've been in the market for uh, a new cookware set. Mine are getting kind of old and ratty, so I decided to go to Bed Bath & Beyond and get me a new cookware set. So I decided to go for uh, this huge Ninja Foodie Never Stick Premium set. This is a 10-piece set. They do have a 13-piece set, uh, although it's about $100 more. This one here cost me about $299. That was the retail price. But yes, because it's Bad Bath & Beyond, I did use the 20% off coupon uh, that they mailed uh, They mailed us. Uh, so I saved about 60 bucks on that. Uh, so let's, uh, let's take a look at this box here. So uh, basically you have 10 pieces in here. You've got an 8 inch fry pan, a 10 and a quarter inch fry pan, one and a half quart saucepan with the lid, two and a half quart saucepan with the glass lid, a three quart saute pan, with a glass lid, a six and a half quart stock pot with a lid. So you've got lids for everything except for uh, the eight inch fry pan. Uh, it also, uh, it's good for uh, your electric ranges, your uh, gas ranges, your glass ceramic ranges, and induction. So it's got the uh, stainless steel bottom uh, plate for induction. Uh, it says it's safe up to 500 degrees. So let's uh, take a look at some of the side shots here. Okay, and I'll put them up on the on the screen for you. So you have uh, premium quality cast stainless handles, hard anodized, yay. Stainless stainless rim glass lid. So you have a glass lid with a stainless rim around it. All right. Okay, and uh, so it looks like it's uh, it's pretty heavy duty stuff. So. You know, and I've seen the commercial, and uh, if you've seen the Ninja Foodie commercial for this uh, pot, go ahead and comment at the bottom, let me know, and let me know what you think, or maybe if you went out and bought it too, uh, let me know what uh, your thoughts are on it too. So um, let's take a look at this side here. Again, steel handle, uh, glass rim with the steel, a stainless steel rim. Uh, never stick, lifetime guarantee. Whoa, that, that's got to be cool. But wait a second, you know, lifetime guarantee, there's a little you know, fine print here at the bottom. Uh, it says, uh, when used as directed, lifetime is based on five years of use. So the, it's not your lifetime, it's the lifetime of the pan, which they estimate to be five years. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. But five years is, is you know, pretty, pretty good uh, amount of time uh, to cook it every day, to use every day. Uh, let's see, what else do they claim on this box? We proudly guarantee the non-stick performance for the lifetime of your cookware because it never sticks, chips, or flakes. Well, that's yet to be determined, my friend. All right, uh, let's see what else we have here. Okay, well, you know what? Let's just get into the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbox it, take everything out, and uh, I'll show you what came in the box and uh, what my initial thoughts are on it. All right, so I've already taken everything out of the uh, out of the box, as you can see. Uh, actually, it was uh, it was packed really well. I've got to say that uh, they really spent uh, some good time and good efforts packaging everything. Uh, everything was wrapped, wrapped in plastic and with uh, cardboard in between each each layer and each piece. So it was actually packed really well, nice and tight in the box. It wasn't uh, shaking or uh, you know, banging around in there. So uh, let's go through what we have here. Okay, so these are the two saucepans. You, you have a two and a half quart saucepan and a three quart saucepan, both with the lids. So, and the lids, they, they feel really heavy duty, nice and tight. They don't uh, jiggle or anything. They don't, uh, they don't feel loose. 
The, uh, the handles on, on these pots, really sturdy. They feel really strong. Uh, they've got nice thick rivets on the inside there. Uh, goes all the way through. It's got stainless steel base here for your induction heating and also feels nice and thick. So if you're using a, uh, a, a gas stove or electric stove, it should conduct the heat really evenly. But we're going to test that out anyway. I'm, I'm going to test it on the stovetop. Uh, so uh, they feel really good. They feel really heavy duty. Now, uh, when I was in, uh, in Bed Bath & Beyond, I did uh, uh, match them side by side with some of the other pots and pans. Uh, some from uh, Emerald Legacy, from Food Network, uh, also the Barletta versions. And I'll tell you, you know, these are much heavier, much thicker. They feel like they're really premium quality, really heavy duty. So they do feel really well. The, the other ones, they felt like it, I could possibly you know, bend them and crush them by hand. Uh, they may be uh, pretty well made. I don't know having used them, but just side by side view. And when I was picking them up, big difference in weight, uh, uh, weight quality and thickness of the material. So that's why I decided to go with these. So uh, the other thing I noticed is I mean, they put, they put the uh, cardboard between them and they do recommend if you're going to stack them to put paper towels uh, in between. So what I did was I just saved the cardboard that it came with, seeing that it fits perfectly so you can just stack them, stack them inside each other nicely. Uh, your six and a half quart pot here, lid fits on really nice and tight and, and it is good, good size. I mean, feels, feels good too. I mean, again, all the rivets, I mean, really beefy, really, uh, really heavy duty. So, uh, it feels really good. So I keep, I'm going to keep all the cardboard inside of them, uh, for stacking purposes. If I'm going to put anything else in them, uh, you have your, your big pan here. I mean, honestly, I, I wish that this was a little bit bigger, a little wider. I like nice wide pans for stir frying. Uh, the usual pan that I have, I have an old, uh, t uh, titanium, I believe. Uh, it's much bigger. It's, uh, it's probably a, uh, 14 inch or 16 inch pan, really nice high tops. But this one here feels very sturdy, very good. Uh, so uh, that's the initial view of it. Uh, the material does feel uh, rough a little bit. Uh, it's not really super smooth like uh, like you're used to on most uh, ceramic or uh, uh, the uh, the dark non-stick material. Uh, this feels more rough, uh, but. Uh, it's supposed to be non-stick. We're gonna we're gonna test that out. So let's uh, let's see what else came in here. So we have a uh, using care guide. Pretty simple, pretty basic stuff. And we're gonna look at some of these features here. It says uh, compatible with all cook cooktops. Same thing on the box. Cookware and lids are dishwasher safe. Safe for use with all utensil materials, including metal. Uh, oven and broiler safe up to 500 degrees. No PFOA, lead-free, and cadmium-free. Good to know. All right, now, going through this, I also noticed that uh, uh, there's another section uh, that kind of, because I was kind of wary about the uh, safe for use with all utensil materials, including metal. I mean, they specifically said metal, uh, so I was kind of wary about that. Uh, but under the utensil section here, uh, it uh, goes on to say that... Uh, uh, shouldn't use, never use sharp instruments such as knives or forks or appliances such as electric mixers to cut or do anything in the uh, in the, the pots and the pans and the cookware. So uh, definitely, you know, keep reading when you see that. Uh, you you want to get in there with a knife, you're going to damage the material. Uh, even though I've seen the commercial and they went in there with scouring pads and uh, maintained, I really don't want to do that to my cookware. Uh, but if, uh, if they claim that it's going to hold up, time will tell. Now, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond does give you a 90-day return policy. That's what it said on the receipt. Uh, so uh, I'm going to test this out for the next 90 days and see you know, if, it, if it holds up and uh, what comes out of it. Uh, hand washing is recommended, but dishwasher will work. Uh, and then you have this one pamphlet. Really, nothing else came in the box for first use. Uh, it says uh, to preheat the pans for one to two minutes, uh, but don't do it on high. And if you're going to use high, don't let it sit dry for more than uh, two or three minutes. Uh, and it goes on to say, uh, again, here's another not recommended. And it shows a picture of a 
knife and a fork. Uh, obviously, you know, don't cut anything on there. Don't poke at it with sharp objects. Uh, also, it says uh, don't use aerosol cooking sprays. Now, I've noticed, and I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, uh, using uh, you know Pam or anything like that in other cookware, uh, it tends to stain it. Uh, it did that to my air fryer also. It tends to stain the material, the, the metals. Uh, so definitely uh, don't use that unless you absolutely have to. And uh, over 500 degrees is not recommended. Uh, so that, that's pretty much it. Uh, maintenance is pretty uh, uh, pretty easy, just like any other cookware. You know, uh, some uh, uh, soft non-abrasive soap, soft sponges. You know, uh, just kind of take care of it. And uh, if you're going to stack it again, use. I'm going to be using the cardboard, but you can use paper towels in there too. So let's uh, let's get down to the nitty gritty and actually do some cooking tests on it. So I'm going to take you over to my stove top and we're going to test a few things on it and see how this thing holds up. Okay, so we're just going to put it on here. Put it on medium because it says not to uh, preheat on high. So we're going to let it heat up for one to two minutes. All right, so now I'm preheating the pan on uh, medium heat. Uh, for about a minute or two as they recommended. So I've got my trusty uh, infrared thermometer here. We're going to test the heat before I put anything in it just to make sure that it's pretty even. So let's uh, let's turn this on. Okay. All right, so if you can see the red dot. Okay. You can see the red dot here. It's, you know, 293, 297, okay, a little bit of a cold spot here. Okay, 297, 287. So, I mean, it's a little cooler here by the handle, right here. It's a little cooler. So, go to the far side. So, it's, it's uh, almost, uh, almost about 15 degrees cooler. And that might just be because the handle is drawing some of the heat away. So we're gonna we're gonna give it another second or two. So we're at about 320 degrees. It's holding temperature pretty good. Uh, so it's pretty even, uh, about 10 degree, 15 degree difference between uh, where the handle is, which seems to be the coolest part, which I'm assuming uh, the metal is probably drawing some of that heat, uh, the metal of the handle. The handle is not, uh, not hot at all here, although it is kind of warm over here where the forks are. Uh, I can feel the heat from there, and that's probably where it's drawing some of the heat from this area here. But uh, the handle itself, I mean, I'm holding it not a problem at all. So it's, uh, it's staying pretty, uh, pretty cool. So uh, that's the first test. Yay, yeah, all right, much better. So we're going to let that cook until uh, it's fully cooked and then we'll move it. Let that cook until it's fully cooked. So I'm going to keep the camera on there until it's done. And we'll, we'll give it a shake and see if we can shake it loose without using the spatula. Okay, and it looks like it's starting to, starting to come together here. Just want to make sure that it's getting there. We'll test the temperature again, see what temperature we're at. Now we're at about 414, 400 degrees. Uh, so looks like the temperature is pretty steady. Again, by the handle here, it's still a little cool. So it's about 388 degrees. On the furthest end, you got about 400, and uh, the the pan is in the center here. So, and I'm using gas heat, so uh, there may be some some issues with that. But it's uh, overall, it's uh, it's within a few degrees, 15 degrees or so. So, it seems to be holding temperature pretty well. So, I'll give it a little shake here, see if anything happens. No, nope, nothing's happening. So, and I broke the egg again. 
I'm just breaking eggs here. Right, I'm going to let this one go all the way through because uh, we're just testing the non-stick capabilities on it and how it cooks. So I'm just going to try to poke it up, see if it if it's actually stick sticking. Now I can feel it a little, a little bit uh, uh, tacky underneath there. So let's see if I can pull that up. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's, I mean, it's releasing. It's definitely not sticking. It's definitely not as slippery as a Teflon or ceramic, but uh, just with a little, a uh, little bit of a spatula push here. I mean, you can move it. So it's, it came, came off pretty good. Nothing stuck anywhere. So because that broke, I'm going to, I'm going to flip it sunny side down and let it finish cooking that way. As you can see, it didn't burn any of it. It stayed nice and white. I didn't use any oil. I didn't use uh, anything on this pan, just again, preheated. So it, uh, you can see there's no burn marks, no overheating or anything like that. Sometimes you get uh, some brown uh, stripes uh, if the pan is overheating or if it's getting too hot uh, uh, or if you get the heat up a little too high. I've got it on medium right now. So it uh, seems to be holding up pretty good. So just a little bit of a push just releases it. I mean, that that's pretty good for the egg. So I'm just going to take that, put that here. Okay. All right. So uh, I think it passed the egg test. Uh, again, it's not as slippery where it just releases. You do have to give it a little bit of a push with a spatula, but you know, other than that seems to be uh, doing its job. So I'm going to take the next test. We're going to be doing the, uh, the cheese test. I'm just going to put a blob of cheese on there and we're going to see if it sticks. All right, so for the next test, I'm just going to take some regular shredded cheese. Just some regular shredded cheese here. This is a cheddar uh, mix, Mexican mix. We're just going to take some of this and put, uh, put it right in the center. But first, I want to check the temperature. Now it's been sitting on medium uh, for quite a bit. Uh, so we're seeing about 457 in the center, 458. And it's still coolest by the handle, by the handle here. So it's still coolest there. 458, 59 there, and 430. So the two edges across here seem to be the coolest edges. And that may have to do with the, uh, the stove itself and also the way that the handle draws, draws the heat. So, Let's grab some cheese. Now, I haven't sprayed it at all. Uh, we're just going to put the cheese on there and see what happens. I'm going to take a big glob of it and put it right there. You can hear the sizzle. And we're going to let it go and see what it does. So it looks like it's melting really quick. So we know that this pan is really hot. So we're going to let it go until it's just about completely melted. All right, we're almost there. You can see the edges over here start, starting to brown all the other pieces here. So the key to this test here, the way I see it, is while the cheese is hot, obviously it's going to be loose. Uh, I want to wait till it cools off uh, and see if it actually sticks. Uh, now, if you want to take a look down here, just to make sure, if you see the pieces, it's kind of releasing nicely, like that. I mean, that's that's pretty good. Like, I mean, that's really nice. Didn't stick at all. But what I want to do is uh, wait until it's cooled off. So I'm going to turn the heat off. Wait till it's cooled off, and then and then see if it actually sticks. If it does anything uh, when it's cool. All right. So now I let it cool, and if you take a look at the temperature. It's still at 200 degrees on the pan. And if you see, I mean, it actually maintained its temperature really well. And it's pretty evenly cooling too. So we're just gonna move this to here. And let's see if we can get it to shake. So it's not, it's not moving. 
So I hope it might be stuck. Oh, I guess not. Look at that. I mean, it's not sticking at all. I mean, the rest of this just comes right off. So it definitely uh, doesn't stick. Uh, just with a little bit of uh, persuasion with the spatula, it comes right right off. So, uh, and that was hot and cool. Uh, it's, so far, I'm pretty happy with this. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet. So just put that aside. Now I'm going to clean out the pan and we're going to try the next test, which is going to be a uh, regular cheese omelet. We're going to, I'm going to cook that up and see how it, uh, what color it is. Cause sometimes if the, uh, the omelet turns different colors in different areas, you have hot spots. So we're going to see if it holds a nice white uh, or uh, yellowish uh, color on it. Uh, similar to the way the egg was. I'm, I'm expecting the same kind of uh, result where it stays nice and uh, nice and clean. So I'll bring you back when I uh, clean out the pan. I'll preheat it and uh, we'll, we'll see what the omelet does. All right, so I've cleaned the pan out and I've preheated. So we are at 427, 420 degrees here. So 430 and rising. I'm on medium. So I'm just going to make a quick omelet. This is going to be just a cheese omelet. Uh, I just put a little bit of milk uh, with two eggs, some salt and pepper, a little bit of onion powder, garlic powder. Uh, I'm not, I haven't seasoned the pan at all. It's a dry pan. So we're just going to give it a little beat here and see what comes out. All right. So let's just pour it in there. Nice. And that is working quickly. So I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit and get that, get the edges going. Okay. And we're going to let this sit for a little bit until the edges start coming up. So as you can see along the edges here, it's, it's already starting to pull away. So I'm just going to let it keep going here. Because it's, it's moving quickly. If I was doing uh, extra, see, actually, you can start seeing the bottom here. So let's, let's give it a little bit of a twirl. So I want to get it all rolling here. And you can see it, it's already done. I mean, it's not even running anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some cheese to it. I didn't even have to do anything to it. This thing just took off on its own because it just heated really nicely. So I'm just going to add the cheese. Yeah, and this is again just Mexican blend cheese, cheddar cheese. All right, get that on. I'm going to save a little bit for the top. And we're going to start rolling it here. Look at that. That's really nice. So I'm just using my hands here. Really nice here. And as you can see, it's it's actually really, really uh, slippery. Not not super slippery, but it's not stick. Uh, it's not sticking at all. And you can see the brown here, where it's pretty even. So the heat has been uh, dispersing evenly here. So we're just gonna give it a little bit of a push to the edge here, just to get it all nice and melted, and give it a flip. So we're going to let that cook just a little bit here. And why not? We're going to put just a little bit more cheese on the top. We've already done the cheese test, but I've got a little extra cheese here. So we're just going to put that on there. So you can see it not sticking at all. That's really nice. That's I'm really, really surprised, really happy with that pan. And it looks like it's uh, it's holding up really well. So I'm just going to turn the heat off. All right. And we're going to get that into a dish. So just going to get that into this dish here. And you can see it's not sticking at all. Nice and clean. I mean, none of that is none of that is sticking. I mean, it's, it's really, really nice. Really nice. 
All right, I'm just gonna take some paper towels now just to give it a, a wipe just to see. And it cleans up really quick and we're ready for the next omelet. So that's that's really really nice, really really nice. So let's uh let's take a look at that omelet. We're gonna just cut into it to see. Look at that, perfectly cooked too. Wow, that's really nice. That's really nice. So I'm just gonna take a taste out of it. So I mean this, I mean it looks nice and fluffy, and, and the color really nice. I mean you got a little bit of toasting on the uh, on the outside of it, uh, on the back side. But that, that's perfect. I mean, that's really nice. Look at that. Hmm. That's really good. So nice and, nice and light. That's how you want your omelets. That's how I like my omelets. You know, so if it's going to do that to my omelets, uh, all the time, you know, this is, this is the pan I'm going to keep for a very long time. So the next test I'm going to try, uh, is, uh, is a candy test. I want to see if you melt the sugar or, or something with sugar in it, uh, like a caramel, if it'll stick. I'm going to turn the heat to medium. Again, we'll get the temperature up. Okay, temperature is at 268, 269, 275. So, yeah, you know, we're, we're in the 200s. We're going to wait till we get to about 300. And I'm going to... Put a candy, now this is a candy with a filling in it. Uh, it's already kind of broken up, so you can see it's kind of, kind of a soft filling. So I'm gonna, seeing that it's broken, I'm just gonna put it on there, this way here. And we'll let it melt. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna let it melt. We're gonna see what it, what it does as it melts. So I'm gonna keep the camera on it uh, until, until it melts and see, uh, see what happens. And we'll see if we can get something to stick on this. So uh, we're going to put the camera on it and uh, see what happens. All right, so uh, I let the candy cool and let's uh, take its temperature. All right, we're at 200 degrees, so cool enough, cool enough. I mean, it looks like it's, you know, it's probably going to stick somewhat. So let's, uh, let's see. My damn thing. Okay. So let's, let's see if it, uh, if it moves here. Hey, look at that. It's, I don't think this is sticking. Wow, this is nice. I mean, not, I mean, there you go. I mean, it's pretty burnt here, but not seeing any evidence here of any sticking. It actually peeled right off and it's cool enough for me to hold. So uh, not bad at all. So, so those are my, my tests so far. Uh, now, I know I'm probably going to continue using these, so if I find anything or, or notice anything, I'm sure I'll be putting it on the, uh, on, the on YouTube or uh, I'll let you guys know in the comments section. But uh, let's close up the video. Uh, we'll get back to the counter and I'll give you my thoughts. All right, so now I think we've done some pretty good tests on the, uh, on the cookware here. And my first impression of the Ninja Foodie uh, Never Stick cookware uh, I, I think I think it's well made. Uh, really, uh, I feel like the the pots are heavier than the ones I had. Uh, these uh, these feel heavy duty. They feel premium. Uh, yeah, I mean, these are a premium premium style. Uh, I think they do have uh, other versions of it, but this one uh, is the newest one that just came out probably a few weeks ago. Now the question is, how long is this coating going to last? Now I've had some Teflon coating and some ceramic. And you know, after you know a few weeks, uh, it starts getting scratched up and worn out. So uh, kind of curious to see how long this is going to last. Uh, now uh, I did notice one thing. We uh, we did uh, we did notice uh, experience a little bit. Uh, it sounded like crackling noise uh, during the original uh, uh, preheating of uh, of one of these pots. 
Uh, and uh, I think I think what it was is the lid because we were using the lid on it because uh, I could hear it on the lid. Uh, it was probably the expansion of the uh, the lid, uh, the way the folds are, probably expanding uh, with the heat uh, against the glass. Uh, I didn't notice any uh, any cracks or anything peeling. Cleanup is fantastic. I mean, even washing it in the sink by hand, just a little soap and water and a soft sponge, and that pretty much took care of it so far. Uh, right now, looks like it's holding up, you know, initially, but uh, the only time is going to tell how long this is going to last. Currently, for this specific product, the receipt said 90 days, so I'm going to use these for the next 90 days, and if I come up with anything, you bet you I'm going to I'm going to put a video follow up video on it. Uh, I think, uh, my opinion, these are definitely worth it. If you're in the market to get these, I'll leave some links at the bottom. Uh, these are uh, my Amazon links. Uh, if you guys have any questions, any uh, any concerns, or anything you want me, want to see me uh, try with these, let me know in the comments section. Uh, if it's something that's doable and safe, uh, I'd be happy to give it a try. And uh, we appreciate you watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed this unboxing and review, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.